Straight down the barrel. So the eye line. In between the two cameras. Would be great. If you are happy, you know um, I mean? and I know it's a bit weird because if someone asks you a question, you want to be polite and answer the person. The best thing you can do is answer to Jeanette, the blonde lady, um, and uh, that way it'll, it'll look like much better footage. If you're looking across being polite to people on camera, it looks like you're being a bit shifty. So just look straight down at Jeanette. So ladies and gentlemen, clearly we're here because the current system is not working. Those who want to propagate to increase the, the current system clearly are ill-informed or just basically don't care. Elders of communities, mayors of major towns, major industrial centres are standing up and saying enough is enough. We need the system to change. What we have had is not good enough. What we have had is delivering our children into hell and they have to be protected. Mayor, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm the Mayor of Port Hedland, uh, Camilo Blanco. And um, we put this uh, video together because, um, as it says, it's quite clear that uh, there are significant issues, um, uh, domestic violence um, and sexual assaults happening, um, you know, within the Pilbara region. This is not just isolated to one area, this is happening across uh, WA as well. And, um, and uh, you know, I know what's happening and I'm not prepared to sit silent um, while this, uh, this is going on. We need to do something about it, we need to act now. Um, and uh, we've had uh, a lot of um, information being given to us and report after report being done and still um, in 2017, you know, hundreds of kids have been sexually assaulted, domestic violence is out of control, alcohol abuse is, you know, is, is not being reined in um, and the government needs to uh, um, intervene and um, create the solution that fixes this problem. Can I just ask for sound? Would you rather we do that again when you don't have the bell going? I mean, it's not a problem. It's fine. Are you completely happy? Yeah. Yep. It's directional, so... Be well done. Fantastic. Yep. Okay. Now, good to you. I'm Bianca. I'm um, from the East Kimberley, so from Wyndham. I'm um, a local person from the community. I'm also one of the strong advocates and one of the leaders on the cashless debit card rollout um, in the East Kimberley. Um, and I'm here to, you know, support Andrew and the Mayor about what's going on in the communities. It's not only happening in the Pilbara, it's all also happening in the East Kimberleys as well. You know, we're tired of our, our children, you know, committing suicide, you know, at the age of eight years old and and yeah, um, younger and being abused. So um, yeah, we're here to, you know, as part of a, as a community um, perspective and a, and a representative of the community, I'm um, here to talk to you guys and, and yeah, be supportive of it. Thank you. You've heard from me, my dear. Don't worry about <coughs> anything, just making sure you're clear. My name is Jean O'Reilly and I'm also a committee member from Wyndham um, in the East Kimberley and I'm in support of the Texas debit card and today I'm really in support of Andrew and as Bianca my um, colleague has said and I'm also in regards to cleaning up some stuff in our communities and the mayor, um, Camilla, as well, so if you can have a big, um, and it's all across the board, the problems are all across the board, so yeah, we would like to see some changes and some to stop the suffering and stuff that happened to our children and our community. We'd like to make a change and make a difference. Okay, um, why don't we open it up to questions? If the community wants this and the government is supportive of it, what, what's the delay? Are you frustrated um, that it's not being rolled out further in Australia? Look, I think, I think we need to get the Labor Party firmly behind it. We need the Labor Party to listen to the little children. We need the Greens in particular to listen to the little children. We have a situation now where um, people who do not visit these towns are not part of these communities are on welfare and they're concerned 
that their party pills or their drugs might one day be taken away from them, and they don't care what is happening to vulnerable Australians. They might not be vulnerable, but their lack of care for their own fellow Australians who are vulnerable, I find amazing. I'd like our political leaders across the spectrum, the independents, crossbenchers, Labor Liberal, to listen to the children, listen to these elders, stop blaming the police force, stop blaming the health service, say we need to be responsible ourselves behind closed doors. That's where these dreadful crimes happen. We can't say to our police, you must have 24-7 power to break in and search homes. That's ridiculous. To anyone who advocates, we have to have more of what we've already got, define insanity. We need a different solution which can help people help themselves. We know that the federal government's considering at least a few more trial sites for these cashless welfare cards, and that is due to be announced imminently. So why now with the war zone um, video that you're releasing? Well, that, that, I'll, I'll answer that. That is because... Um, you have to start over here. That, that's because... Um, I know the benefits uh, that the, the cashless welfare card has done to Sejuna and also uh, Kununurra. So if those benefits are real, I, um, I've spoken to the uh, leaders of those areas and they said they're real, they transformed their, their town with the implementation of that card. So if that's the case, I want that for my town. I want my town to be able to uh, you know, benefit from uh, a program that's rolled out that actually works instead of these programs that have been going on since 1990, billions of dollars have been thrown at it, and nothing has improved. So, bring it on. I want it for our town, you uh, for our area. Sorry, just on that note, just to follow on um, from, from the, the Mayor, just to make it clear to him and, and to you guys, it is working in these Kimberleys. Okay, we've got fathers with, um, that are... Um, you know, they've got children, they're taking their children to supermarkets and, and spending their money, you know, that would never do that in, be, before this card come out. You know, we've got doting dads that are sitting at airports with their little three-year-old kids, you know, and they're proud and they've actually got them by themselves and they're, you know, it's because of this, the, the cashless debit card that has been, this has been happening. You know, we've got, and we've never seen the, those things before. As a business owner, I've got families coming into my business purchasing household items you know for their for their houses because at part of the, the program is they've gotten moving into new homes you know they're making their lives better because of this card so it is working and you know if it can be rolled out nationally if it can be rolled out to other communities that's all good and well mr forrest is, is a cashless welfare card enough to stop systemic, systemic abuse in these communities? And if not, what other measures are needed? Okay, so we of course need a holistic solution, but we need a, a circuit breaker. The cash debit card is acting as a circuit breaker to really limit the amount of drugs and alcohol which, are, which come into and are consumed by communities. That gives the community services a chance, that gives health workers a chance, that gives the police a chance. But unless we have that circuit breaker, unless we can actually stop the tide of drugs and alcohol coming into these communities through cutting off the demand, you can't cut off supply, it just pushes the price up. But if you can cut off the demand of drugs and alcohol, then you'll see and you'll hear the hard evidence you're getting from these indigenous communities, these leaders. And it's vulnerable Australians, non-indigenous and indigenous, which is suffering under drugs and alcohol, suffering under an expectation that this is what is expected of them. No, it's not. We expect them to lead good, happy, healthy, independent lives. You can't do that with drugs and alcohol. So yes, should it be rolled out for everyone under 18? Of course, why does a child need access to drugs and alcohol? Let's be decisive. Let's have every child on welfare at least be able to make responsible choices and then let's also allow to every community who suffers the kind of problems, non-Indigenous communities and Indigenous communities suffer the kind of problems which you've seen very recently on this video. Do you have any concerns that this method of quarantining welfare payments is 
too much of a top-down approach. How can you balance that with some bottom-up initiatives to stop some of these systemic issues? Okay, this is an absolute bottom-up initiative. You probably know that drugs and alcohol weren't here before the tall ships of whitefellas arrived. Indigenous people didn't suffer these problems. We have introduced them. This is a total bottom-up approach. We're helping mums, dads, pedophiles who regret what they've done the following morning. We're helping them make better choices late at night by them not being carried away with drugs, not being heavily under the influence of alcohol, not making shocking choices which ruin the lives of their own children, which they regret the following day. This bottom-up approach is needed by communities where the police simply say, we can't help. And you've seen a police commissioner here shaking his head saying, police cannot invade every home. That's not what we're here for. We need parents, foster carers, carers, even kids themselves to get free of drugs and alcohol so they can make better choices. I would recommend it to every vulnerable community, Indigenous and non-Indigenous across Australia, and certainly our youth. A lot of these um, statistics and these images and this footage indeed is not necessarily new. It, has it got to the point where you needed to bring this together to actually create some shock value, not just for politicians but for the community? We need to arrest the attention of all those that think Australia is okay. We need to arrest the attention of all those who think that in suburbs and communities that drugs and alcohol are not devastating them. Drugs and alcohol are devastating communities. Drugs and alcohol are the indirect but major cause of the hideous pedophilia, the crimes against children, the terrible, terrible injustices. When you take kids out of school or prevent kids from going to school, you can put that firmly at the feet of drugs and alcohol. We need to do something different to make change. What do you say to the Greens who particularly have been opposed to this initiative in, in the trial sites even? Okay. Oh, can, I, can, I, can I jump in there? Okay. What, we say to them, what we say to them is, uh, what is your solution? Give me a solution that actually works, that will actually work. And I, every time I ask that question to someone that opposes the cashless welfare card, what is your solution? They come up with nothing. I can see the cashless welfare card is working. Let's give it a crack. Let's give it a go. What are, we, what's, what are we going to lose? And my comment to the Greens is, what if that was your child? Yes. What would you be doing if that was your child? So, um, you know, being abused, being affected by drugs and alcohol. It's no difference. It shouldn't be black or white. You know, it's, it's everyone. Drugs and alcohol is, affects everyone. So if, you know, with the Greens, if they're opposed to it, they need to think about the grassroots and come and see us, you know, just talk to the community people. And if it was their own child that was affected by it and their own family, how would they feel? Do you have anything to add to Yeah, I think, I think those politicians who are populist, who are saying, well, we don't think the card works, I think they're covering themselves with shame. I think history is going to judge them very harshly for opposing a measure which is obviously helping communities, leading to families getting back together, leading to kids going to school. Politicians who oppose the card being trialled in communities which are so desperate that anything that's going to help are covering themselves with shame. And just following on, I'm not just We need help. We need the community. We need the government to intervene and help us out as community leaders because we can't do it on our own. We need accountability from the government and we need to openly see that we are Australians. We are all Australian, regardless of creed, race, creed, or whatever. We are all the same. We should live by the same laws and all laws should apply across the community of the wider Australian 
both with black and white, whoever, you know. The law should be specifically for everyone across the board. And you should just stop saying, making excuses that everything's good in the community, well, it's not. Sorry, it's not. I just, like, I'm passionate about my community, and so is my counterpart, um, Bianca, and it's just so emotional. You know, so, yeah, that's my story. Thank you, Thank you very much. I would like politicians in our country to listen to the community, to understand your systems are not working, to ignore the populace, ignore the Greens who are fighting against the card as heartless people who cover themselves with shame because they're not listening to the communities, they're not defending the little children, they're worrying about their swinging boat, they're worrying about their own skin. What about you stop being so selfish, Greens? What about you stop being so selfish, swinging politicians? What about you back the children? No, we have got strong males in our community in the East Kimberleys that are, are supporting it, as well as Sujuna. Um, you know, we've, the, so it's, a, it's, a both, it's both males and females, um, but unfortunately our, our two males from the East Kimberleys couldn't be here with us, so that's why myself and Jean are here um, today. Um, but we've got, a, we've got a strong backing with, with the males as well. Your community. Yep. And also the community actually um, realises how strong leadership we have. And yeah, there's only two of us, but we are passionate. We sat in the meeting for 16 months when the CDC card rolled out. So we didn't get no pay or nothing. It was just compassion for the community that we work um, on godly hours, you know, of our own back. So that means something, that we want to clean up our community and be responsible people, you know. So we need our children to follow in our footsteps so that we want a clean and educated community where everyone is responsible for their own welfare. And just get rid of this welfare reform, you know? I mean, living off the welfare is a bad thing, but we need to have jobs and we need to have our younger generation and we need to think for the younger generation as well that's going forward to own their own homes, you know? And to be proud of themselves and to work for their money to earn stuff. So, and you know, like, have better lives, better themselves, and just get rid of all these problems in our community with the help of the government, we can do it together. We can walk together and we can share our problems together. As a white Australian, you know? Across the board, it's for non-indigenous, it's for white people as well as Aboriginal people as well. So the welfare card is for the people it's, it encompasses everyone. So it's not just for Aboriginal people, like people are thinking and they're negative stuff saying that it's only targeted Aboriginal people, that is wrong. You should come to the area where we do have the Catholic Stabber card rolled out in our communities and then find out the differences, you know? We are happy. We see families going shopping, like my colleague said, Bianca, that they go to a shop and buy stuff. And if they had the key card, their own very own kika, they wouldn't have done those things like that. So you're seeing leadership here from really good communities. You've asked me a question, are the women standing up in this community? The answer is yes. I do witness serious misogynism and serious arrogance in many communities, indigenous and non-indigenous, where people are prepared to look the other way, people are prepared to say, just send in more money. When I say, has that money done terrible harm already? Yes, it has, but I want even more. The question is not about money. The question is about how it is spent. We're not trying to stop money going into communities. We're trying to ensure that it doesn't go to drug dealers and publicans and bottle shops and indirectly cause massive suffering, permanent harm to the future generations of Australians. Any other questions, team? Thank you very much. It's rock and roll. Do you want to just wait there for some comments? No. Oh.